profitability ratios problem two. Plum Inc. provides the following data. It's a table that presents information by 20x9 and 20x8. Assets, current assets, cash and cash equivalents in 20x9, $40,000. Cash and cash equivalents 20x8, $25,000. Accounts receivable net 20x9, $32,000. Accounts receivable net 20x8, $62,000. Merchandise inventory 20x9, $53,000. Merchandise inventory 20x8, $50,000. Total current assets 20x9, $125,000. Total current assets 20x8, $137,000. Property plant equipment net 20x9, $121,000. Property plant equipment net 20x8, $120,000. Total assets 20x9, $246,000. Total assets 20x8, $257,000. For the year ending December 31st, 20X9, net credit sales $530,000, cost of goods sold $150,000, gross profit $380,000. There are no cash sales. Calculate the asset turnover ratio for 20X9. So we're looking at the asset turnover ratio, and this is part of the profitability analysis. The profitability analysis evaluates the ability of a company to generate future earnings. This ability depends on the relationship between the company's operating results and the assets the company has available for use in its operations. So that's the relationship between income statement items and balance sheet items are used to evaluate profitability. That's why we have the asset turnover ratio, which is going to, you're going to see is going to be a function of the income statement and the balance sheet, big items on those items, on those respective statements. Now, profitability analysis is a lot of different ratios. There's a ratio of net sales to assets. There's rate earned on total assets, rate earned on stockholders' equity, rate earned on common stockholders' equity. There's earnings per share. There's dividend yield. There's so many different types of ratios, big ones, important ones, lots of important ones. We're focusing on the asset turnover ratio, the asset turnover ratio. The asset turnover ratio measures how effectively a company uses its assets. And all we do, we take sales over average total assets, average total assets. And again, what it's doing is this ratio is looking at how effectively a company uses its assets, how effectively it uses assets. Because as we know, the purpose of a for-profit business is to generate income. And of course it has to expend things and use assets to get that income in order to generate profit. We want higher income, lower expenses to generate more profit. That is our goal. That is our goal. So here, sales, we're given sales. We're just going to use the net credit sales number. We're going to use that $530,000. That's going to be our numerator. That's going to be our numerator. The average total assets. So the sales were only given 20x9. So there was no difference in 20, 20x8 and 20x9. We're looking for the asset turnover ratio for 20x9. Now, some of you out there are saying, well, can we eliminate the 20x8? No. And the reason why is because when you're looking at averages, you need to average at least two items. You can average more than two, but at least two. We're averaging the total assets, which is our last line, in terms of 20x9. Some of you are wondering, well, why are we using 20x8? Why are we using 20x8? Because remember, this is on December 31st. We're looking at December 31st dates. So December 31st, 20x9. December 31st. 20x8. Now remember, go back to your rules of accounting, end of the accounting period, 20 X, December 31st, 20x8, we roll over the next day the permanent accounts, which are the asset, assets, liabilities, owner's equity, balance sheet accounts. These become 1, 1, x9. Oh, so beginning of the balance, end of the balance, we average those, average those two numbers, and you're exactly right. So we're going to take the average of $246,000 and $257,000. We're going to average those two numbers together to get our average total assets. Let's go ahead and do that. So $246,000 plus $257,000. We're going to add those two numbers together and we're going to divide that by two. So when we do this calculation, $530,000, which is our numerator, that's our sales, over the denominator, when you average those two numbers together, you can get 251,500. That's going to equal 2.11. So the ratio is 2.11 times. So the idea here is this is the asset turnover ratio. 2.11 times is a turn. And again, 
This asset turnover ratio measures how effectively a company uses its assets. The lower, the better, because the idea is that if you have a larger amount of sales in your assets, you're doing a lot of a little. The higher it is, that's not as good because if you have a billion dollars in assets and only a million dollars of sales, that's going to be a very low turn ratio, turnover ratio, asset turnover ratio, because you're not really using your assets effectively. Now, some businesses, some industries, this changes. If you've got businesses like you're renting out big pieces of office equipment, and you know, getting rent on that, that's going to be a lot different than let's say a service business where maybe you don't have as much in sales, but in, or, I'm sorry, you have a lot of sales, but not as much in assets. So keep that in mind. It's all about the industry with this ratio, but keep in mind, this is all about measuring how effectively a company uses its assets.